Hi, my name is Thul Sinarin with the Dado Solution Engineering Team. In this video, I'll demonstrate and discuss the steps to take in deploying a virtual service appliance in VMware's ESX. The virtual service appliance provides MSPs with flexibility of deploying Cirrus in Hyper-V and ESX environments. Rather than utilizing a Dado physical Cirrus, MSPs can opt to deploy the solution as a VM. It is not uncommon to see virtual service appliance deployed in hypervisors that have sufficient compute and storage resources. These environments can be within a customer environment or a colo facility or even a bare metal cloud providers facility where partners have full control over the hypervisor. Before deploying a virtual appliance on ESX, a number of considerations should be made. Virtual Cirrus is supported on ESX versions 5.5, 6, 6.5, and 6.7, and in the near future, version 7. ESX must be licensed as a Virtual Cirrus required access to the hypervisor storage API for agentless backup, verification, and testing, as well as instant hypervisor restores. While Virtual Cirrus will install on ESX3, many of its features will not work. If you're still using version 5.5 of ESX, the vSphere client is required. Starting at version 6, the web GUI provides better usability. To deploy the OVA, a data store with at least 60 gigs of free space is required for it to be properly unpacked. The shell the OVA creates will need to be associated with a virtual disk to hold its backup. This can be existing in the same data store or another. Dado recommend a tick provision disk for backups. The compute requirements for the vSeries needs to be a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM and four virtual CPUs. Larger vSeries require additional compute. I recommend visiting the Dado knowledge base at help.dado.com for further guidance when setting up larger virtual series appliances. All right, we're ready to get started on deploying the virtual Cirrus on ESX. The first place I need to visit is download.dado.com. Navigate to Cirrus Virtual and download the OVA file. If you're running vCenter, you can deploy the OVA remotely versus having to download and then perform the deployment. With the OVA downloaded on my local machine, I can now begin the deployment in ESX by clicking on Create or register VM button. In the name for the VM, I'll enter vSeries. Next, I'm ready to upload the OVA by selecting it from the web UI. For the storage, I'll select a data store with sufficient space for the deployment. Under deployment options, I want to select the correct network. Set this provisioning to tick and uncheck the power on automatic button as we'll need to associate a second disk for the backup target. Proceed by clicking on next, then finally on finish. Uploading of the OVA will take several minutes. Once that is complete, ESX will attempt to configure the VM. With the reconfiguration of the VM completed, we are ready to proceed in editing the VM and associating the disk for storing our backup data. This disk should be equivalent to the size of the virtual series purchase. For example, if I purchase a one terabyte virtual series, the disk I want to provision will be a one terabyte disk. Okay, I'll select the VM, right click and edit settings. From the top, I'll add a new hard disk. Expanding the hard disk properties allows me to move it into another data store. I'll keep the disk provision as tick provision lazy zeroed and set the size to 100 gig for my test case. I'll review compute and networking specs to ensure those matches Dado's best practices. To view a list of virtual appliance size to compute ratio, visit the knowledge base at help.dado.com. All right, this looks good. I'll go ahead and click on save. We are now ready to power on the virtual machine. 
Clicking on the power button and opening the VM console provides insights into the boot process. It takes a couple minutes, but the appliance will reflect a console screen with an IP address for the virtual appliance. We are now ready to register and configure the appliance. I'll navigate to the IP address in Chrome. When you purchase a virtual service appliance from the Dado store, an authorization code will be emailed to you. Go ahead and enter the code here. I'll validate the code by clicking on the validate button. With the code validated, we can now proceed to update the appliance. All Dado appliances follow an update process during the registration to get the latest security updates as well as feature enhancements. Updates may take 10 to 15 minutes to process. Please allow ample time for this process to finish. With the appliance up to date and reboot, we are ready to proceed on configuring the storage. Recalling from earlier, I purposely created a storage disk of 100 gig. The minimum virtual series appliance is one terabyte with a maximum of 60 terabyte at the time of recording this video. Since this is a test, I will accept the 100 gig and continue. I can now register the appliance. The device name field corresponds to the host name of the appliance. Let's call our appliance virtual tests. For the username, you'll want to select names outside of admin, administrator, and root. These are all reserved names. I'll enter Tulsi as a username with a strong password. For email alerts, I'll enter my Dado email. You'll want to choose an email address for your service desk or where you typically send alert emails to. Time zone is extremely important on the appliance as we use this value to initiate backups. Picking the wrong time zone will offset your backup schedule. I'll leave it as America, New York, Eastern Time. The offsite data storage location need to reflect the residency of the data set. In my case, I'll set this to Canada. Lastly, I need to check the box for allowing installation of third party software and drivers. The Dano Virtual Series Appliance runs a Ubuntu operating system and it requires update for its OS and its components. I'll leave the device migration option unchecked as we are not migrating data from another Dado appliance to this one. I'll finalize the registration by clicking on complete registration. All right, so that's it. We now have a virtual Cirrus in ESX registered and ready for use. The yellow banner that you're seeing at the top is informing us that we'll want to pair with a hypervisor for screenshot verification and hypervisor restores. We can use either ESX or Hyper-V for this. Since I'm running this on ESX, I'll go ahead and pair my ESX host to this virtual Cirrus appliance. The Cirrus appliance support both direct hosts and vCenter. For the connection name, I'll keep it simple and call it ESX. For the server, I'll enter the IP address of the ESX host. In my case, it's 192.168. 100.101. We are now ready to provide a username and password. A full admin is required as this user will have full scope to the storage API within ESX. I'll enter my root credentials here. An important item to be aware of. If I was connecting to a vCenter managed environment, I would be prompted for a data center, cluster, and host addresses. Those options are not available since I'm going directly to an ESX host. For the offload method, we have two possible options, NSF and iSCSI. NSF allows for easy migration in case of disaster recovery after virtualization. No additional configurations required on a host when using this method. iSCSI offload by RDM map drivers. When using vMotion, ESX will move RDM map VMDKs normally. The RDM map VMDKs, however, 
are equivalent to symbolic links. Donald recommends using iSCSI as is far more secure than NFS. It does require setting up an extra VM kernel port, which I have done previously. Selecting iSCSI as the offload method, I am now prompted to pick a data store. I can pick any data store for temporarily offload. I'll select the Jeff data store for this. There is only one network adapter, so I'll leave that as default. Proceeding to next, summarize all of the options. I'll finalize by clicking on finish to add the connection profile. Dado appliances are highly secure. If you haven't logged into your portal to access a unit until now, it will have prompt you to do so. As the system requires multi-factor authentication before allowing access to devices. I'll head back into the partner portal to regain access to the appliance. A final item we must configure is to adjust the configuration we just added for screenshot verification. I'll click on configure, then select hypervisor connections. From here, I'll simply check the radio button use for screenshot verification. When a system is ready to run through its boot verification process, it'll use this hypervisor connection to offload to this hypervisor. And just like that, we have reached the end of configuring our virtual service appliance on ESX. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.